Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be investigating whether Ubuntu is spyware. So what do we mean by that? Well, we're just going to look at the network requests because Ubuntu, well, hey, I installed it recently because I found that managing custom versions of packages on a rolling release distro was a nightmare. But Ubuntu is a controversial distro because some people do see it as spyware or being more heavily proprietary. It's also one of the more common distros, and it has a lot of default settings, because it would be essentially impossible to answer the question of if Arch Linux or Gentoo is spyware, because I don't even know if I could answer what is Arch Linux or Gentoo. Like, there's so many ways of installing that, and depending on what you choose, you could end up with some telemetry or absolutely none. So we're going to use uh, Ubuntu, and we'll see if there's options. Uh, my expectation for any Linux distro that is legitimate is that it's not going... If there is any telemetry or spyware, it should uh, be easy to get rid of. It should be entirely optional. If there's anything that we cannot turn off, like there is on Windows, without registry hacks, uh, that is a fail. That That's how the grading system is going to work. And of course, it's worth noting that, like any other piece of software, any... Um, result is subject to change because updates can come out, but I would not expect a major distro to suddenly introduce secret uh, telemetry because everything is source available, so you could you could go through and catch them. There was a controversy, which is why Richard Stallman hates Ubuntu, uh, somewhere, something like 10 years ago where they added an Amazon web search. This is the same reason that Windows sends everything you type uh, to a a server, uh, but they did they did go back on that decision because it was a mistake. If you want to know what the installer does, here we go. Now, of course, I haven't installed the certificate yet, so, but here we go. I've got this fully proxied, like we always do. Uh, some of these it didn't like because if it tries to hit anything HTTPS, it's going to throw a certificate error. Okay, so we've now installed it. Uh, pro tip, you cannot or at least it's not reliable to install the internet ver version uh, with MITM proxy going, so I actually just, yeah, I, I just did that manually. Okay, so now we can choose our settings, and at this point I'm going to get the network going so that we can see if it does uh, try phoning home. Okay, and it is working. So now we just got to install the certificate. Okay, done. Firefox, you have to specifically... Uh, install it because Firefox doesn't trust the system's SSL by default, which isn't necessarily a bad thing in terms of keeping. And now if we go to google.com, for example, it shows up, all good. And uh, in MITM proxy, we have everything decoded. So, only telemetry requests I'm seeing so far are from Mozilla and here we can see what uh, Firefox is tracking, which isn't technically a part of Ubuntu, but it comes by default, so we might as well look. So it says what version we're running, every add-in we have installed, uh, and whether we have some Firefox features enabled. We can check the other ones, just creation date. I think this... Oh, wow, there's quite, there's quite a bit in here. Let's... I'm sure we can get rid of this, but... I don't know if we can get rid of this without ever opening it. Uh, what you can do, of course, is install LibreWolf and simply ditch this whole uh, telemetry mess. Now, of course, it's not sending anything super sensitive like your entire browsing history, but okay, there is quite a bit at uh, Google. Okay, this could be our first. Uh, now, this is just probably, this is just going to be updates. So we can see, do we want Ubuntu Pro? No, we don't want to pay for that. Uh, now, let's see what this does. So, report what kind of hardware we've got, uh, what kind of BIOS we've got, what architecture, what GPU. It's going to just say, this means Vert.io. How much RAM? How much hard disk space? The partitions? The screen resolution? Auto login? Our desktop environment? What graphics environment we're using? And what time zone we're on? Partition method... Okay. So I'm going to allow it just to see what happens. But if we don't allow it, and you have to opt in before it sends anything, uh, so far it's not sending anything. Uh, okay. There we go. So. 
Now, the moment we clicked allow, uh, we can see that that report was sent. And let's just validate that it is working as they said it would. OEM false. So I, I'm assuming if you bought an Ubuntu device, that would say true. So whether we have Active Directory, a uh, bunch of other things. And our desktop environment session, N nothing obvious uh, that would be super privacy inv infringing. It doesn't contain doesn't doesn't contain our CPU model, uh, which is interesting. It does contain GPU model, and it doesn't contain any sort of hardware ID that I can see. And then we get a response processed. Of course, that would be tagged to whatever IP address uh, this is sent to. We would imagine for some period of time. I ma uh, hopefully they have a policy of getting rid of that. Now let's just start opening things. Okay, no hits. Okay, so no hits browsing. Now this is the real killer. This is the thing that upsets me, is when operating systems will do this. No hits. Okay, that's great. And we can actually go to privacy and security and just see what options we've got. So connectivity, connection checking. We can actually get rid of that because that was the only request I was seeing. Screen lock, that's just a security feature. Location, off by default, good. File history and trash. Now this is stored on device, not on the internet. But if you want to get rid of it, there you go. Trash and temporary files, okay. Diagnostics, send error reports to Canonical. It is manual by default. So really everything that we could be worried about. And of course, because Linux systems, and this is a double-edged sword, don't use the kind of antivirus that Windows and Mac do, where any executable they haven't seen before is sent to their servers. That doesn't happen either. Oh, let's just try let's just try sudo echo. I, I just making sure that sudo isn't sending. Nope, nope. Uh, now, of course, if you're on any Linux system, there's one uh, piece of logging that will exist. We can do echo hist file to find it. Seems like that must then be off by default on Ubuntu, which is another good thing for proof. Yeah, so uh, on Ubuntu by default, no bash history beyond your session. If you restart the terminal, it is gone. I, I can approve of that. So it seems like there's no real concerns. Now, if we were to go to any of these, of course, that would go out the window. And okay, sharing is not on by default, but you could set up Samba here. No, let's just see if any anything else that comes with this has telemetry. Like we can try out, I don't think LibreOffice does. Oh, no, it doesn't. I should try here, it was just a DNS hit. Zero network activity. So unless you specifically open something that's going to connect uh, to the internet, uh, it seems like Ubuntu is getting a, a passing grade. Now, one thing I'm just going to do, uh, actually, I don't know how you install LibreWolf on this, uh, is I'm going to try LibreWolf to see if I'm right that it's going to have a lot less telemetry. Okay, so now let's see if LibreWolf is more private than Firefox. So we open it up. Zero request, absolutely nothing. Uh, just some TCP to our homepage. Okay, so we close it. Absolutely nothing. So there we go. So if you don't want telemetry on your browser, there's probably a way of disabling it in Firefox, but if you install LibreWolf, uh, you never have to send any of that information. The only thing we have here is the download of the actual LibreWolf binary. So that's going to be all for this video. Overall result, uh, Ubuntu modern versions of it do respect user privacy. Firefox and probably Mozilla Thunderbird as well do have a, a small amount of telemetry. Uh, nothing sensitive is being sent. And the only optional telemetry in Ubuntu is very, it's not a lot of data, and it's certainly nothing that would identify your activity uh, or tag your activity. It's just some basic information about your hardware. So that was interesting to see, a huge difference between tri-tree operating systems. Next, as many people request, I'm going to try this on macOS to see how that compares. I imagine it'll be somewhere in the middle. It's not going to be a zero but it's also not going to be anywhere near as bad as Windows. So that's all for now. Bye.